we've got a patch by the side of the house. So we dig down from the top of the form down to eight inches and that's where the dirt is. And that dirt is flattened out and compacted. And then we have four inches of crushed stone on top of that. The forms are put in such that there's a 2% pitch. What that means is for every four feet, there is one inch of slope. The rebar is number three and number three rebar, which is three eighths of an inch. Um, the squares are one foot squares and they are tied on top of dobies. So the rebar has a set in, in around the center of the concrete. Then you need to go around. Once you get your forms put in square and sloped, then you need to um, uh, put tape on top of the screw heads such that you don't get any concrete in the screws so you can remove them when you're done. The forms have been oiled with like 10W30 motor oil so they can be removed easily. You also want to go around and cut the um, pegs off to make them level with the top of the form so when you're screeding concrete, they don't get in your way. I have a drain put in right here. So this drain is going to be one inch below the surface of the concrete so there will be a gradual sloping in to this drain. It's good to put a stick on your uh, ramp. You know where to stop the wheelbarrow so you don't run over the ramp. You also want to put covering on the wall. Also have this foam barrier. You put this in along the, the, the wall and that prevents the concrete from sticking to the wall so if the dirt or the house moves it won't cause the concrete to crack. Concrete will crack anyways. It's what concrete does. The purpose of the rebar is to prevent it from separating too much if, it, if and when it cracks. We're ready to go. We're going to take the garden hose. We're going to spray down all the crushed stone, make it wet so the concrete doesn't uh, dry out on the bottom. And we're going to start mixing concrete. This is a one, two, three mix. What that means is one part Portland, two parts sand, three parts gravel. I'm using three eighths of an inch gravel. Um, what I'm doing, this is a three and a half uh, cubic foot uh, mixer from Harbor Freight. So I am going to use two gallons of Portland, four gallons of sand, and six gallons of crushed stone. Uh, that the sand is about um, one square shovel is about a gallon, but I'm still going to measure it out in buckets. And uh, crushed stone, about one and a quarter, one and a half shovels is a gallon. And uh, the Portland cement, 25 pounds is two gallons. Uh, you can measure that into two gallon buckets. I'm going to start out trying about one and a half gallons of water. It'll be somewhere around that, I think. I'll first add half the total water, then the crushed stone. Mix it up. Then I'll put in the sand and the Portland, and then I'll put the remaining water in.
the consistency you want for your concrete. You could make it into a, a ball if you wanted to. So it's not soupy and it's not runny, but at the same time it's not too thick. And as you work this, you're going to draw water out of it anyways. When you put more water than is necessary to make it soupy or liquidy, it's easy to work with, but then all that water is going to dry out. And the concrete dries out after about a month, and that will cause the concrete to shrink. And when the concrete shrinks because the water has gone, uh, you're going to get cracking. So you want to use the least amount of water that is necessary. So the first thing that you do when you dump the concrete in the forms is you got to level it off. So what you do is you take a screed and you call and you, and you strike off the concrete. So what you do is you put it on top of the forms and then you tip it away from you like that and then drag it zigzag like this towards you and that will basically plow the concrete to be flat. Then you go back and you tip it this way and zigzag it again and that'll cut down and that'll bring the concrete flat with the tops of the forms but it will be it'll have this torn look with holes in it so uh, it, it'll be very open and so what you do then is you take a wooden float all this is just a board with a handle that three feet is good and you go on the concrete and then you sort of zigzag back and forth and you sweep it and this is the wood float or derby and that will just uh, flatten your concrete and fill up a lot of those little holes it'll bring the cream to the top which is like Portland cement and um, then you leave the, leave it because the bleed water will start to come to the top and if you start to work the concrete with bleed water on top that's going to weaken your surface so you go away do something else for about uh, 30 or 40 minutes depending on the temperature and when you do that um, then you go back and then the next thing you do is you take a magnesium float like this and you go over the concrete and then what this does is this will smooth out the surface for you and then you get a nice looking surface and then you also take your your uh, like a knife thing and cut the concrete off the forms and take your edging tool and put in your edges along the, the edges of your concrete then you wait another 30 or 40 minutes and then you can go over it again with the magnesium tool you wait because the bleed water comes at the top you want to make sure the bleed water is gone by the when you do the work on the concrete and then if you want really really polished surface like say the floor inside a casco or something like that then you can take a steel trowel and then you can scrub into the surface like that of course after the bleed water is gone so you're looking at two or three steps 20 or 30 minutes in between each step you don't want concrete to dry you want it to cure what that means is it's another word for it is hydration basically the water that's in the concrete will uh, Harden the Portland cement inside the concrete. So you keep the concrete wet for up to seven days after you're done. So by the time you get your tools all cleaned up, you cover your concrete with uh, plastic. And make sure the plastic is completely flat, it's touching the concrete everywhere. Otherwise, you could get like inconsistent color marks or stain marks or whatever when it dries. And keep a gardener hose on, you know, putting water on top of the concrete under the plastic for seven days and by that time the concrete will have cured or hydrated. Another tip is make sure you wear good gloves, not just little latex gloves like this, but really good. Uh, concrete work is not for the weak or lazy people, it's hard work. And it also will really dry out your hands because it's a strong base or very alkaline. And uh, if you do get your hands really dry at the end of the day, try washing them in vinegar, that will soften them up.